Hmm. How you doing, YouTube? Matt Mass Beer Reviews. Back to yet another review. Not by myself, as you can see. This is the uh, Three Amigos. I don't know. There's some kind of hip thrust movement we could do if we we're all standing. Hey. No homage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to, if you haven't seen that movie, then just shut this in. Shut it off and delete my channel because I don't want you watching. But um, but yeah, we're gonna do be doing a little bit of hot butcher uh for the world in the form of karate in the garage. Uh, we will talk about the name soon enough, but let's introduce the gang. I'm Matt. I'm Sean. I'm Mike. And you're from <laughs> Nerd Sense. Hey, there it is. <laughs> so um, so yeah, we um we kind of um, chat back and forth, kind of talking about um, doing one of these beer reviews, uh, you know, for a couple weeks now. Uh, and, uh, you know, Hot Butcher is kind of the easiest one for us because we get boxes from Hot Butcher. We did the Mustachio one uh, on the Nerd Sense channel. So definitely go check that one out. That's a beer I've actually reviewed before, but it was kind of cool because it was like the first one I ever did from Hot Butcher that they sent me. And it was about three years later. Um, and then we we're kind of whittling down which one we wanted to do here. Uh, we have two like crazy high ABV ones that were like, yeah, no, it's like fucking two in the afternoon. You don't want to drink a 12% triple hazy. Um, so it was between, um, what is it? Air glow. Is that the one air glow, air glow, which yeah. I already, yeah, which I reviewed less than a year ago. And then we it settled on this one, which is an 8% double IPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I am curious about this. So everybody knows the reason for the name of the beer, correct? Or no? I don't, I don't think so. I know it's a collab with, with Aslan. Is that a, is that, is it part of that? No. Uh, so it is a collab with Aslan, but it is a line from Step Brothers. It's like, you want to go do karate in the garage. Oh. And that's where the name comes from. And it's a very important thing that I wanted to point out because I've reviewed a double IPA hazy called Karate in the Garage from another brewery before. Ooh. Yeah, Southern Swells from Florida. I re probably reviewed it about a year ago. And usually when you hear another brewery doing another a similar name to somebody else's exact same name, um, you're like, that's pretty fucked up. But they kind of stole it from the movie. So it's not like they're stealing IP from another brewery. The other brewery took it from a movie. So I think it's fair game here. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get too twisted about it. Who had the better label? <laughs> uh, Jets is the best man. His yeah. artwork is pretty much, I mean, Southern Swells, their, their beers and their labels are actually quite, quite cool. Um, they, I think they actually had maybe a still frame, uh, in black and white in the background of the label, but kind of bl blurry to a uh, like yeah. kind of like skirt C and D. Um, but um, but the beer was really good. I'm kind of curious about it. So if you guys want to go check out Karate in the Garage by Southern Swells, you're more than welcome. So um, what do we know about this beer? Mutueka, Citra, Nelson Savine, and Strata Hop Double IPA. All the things I those, like in the world. Those are kind of hop butchers like go-to hops. And it makes sense because those are fucking four absolutely fantastic yeah. hazies. Hazy hops and their tasting notes. What do you guys think about the tasting notes? Do you like them? You, like in general? It sounds like I'm going to like them. No, I mean, in general, across their cans, oh. like the fact that they do the whole tasting note thing. So at first oh. I didn't, I thought it was, it was a little bit spoilery because I, but then I stopped reading them. And if I stopped mm -hmm. reading them before the beer, which I guess we just did now, but, um, I, I felt like it was kind of fun to go see if I was close. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the fun part. Um, but yeah, I, I try as much as possible to not read them if, 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 if anything. And for those who want to know at home, we're talking about a fresh tropical, pleasant, dank and bright citrus. And actually, and I actually didn't like them either. Um, uh, until when we talked to Jeremiah, um, on the, um, on the, on the live stream we did with him and he kind of explained why he does it because a lot of people, you know, were kind of in that super 1% nerdy thing when it comes to beer not a lot of people are like that so it gives them a little bit of a kind of guideline on what they're drinking not necessarily like to tell them what they like yep. but like guide them along and then let them kind of not want to understand what they're tasting but two also be like i like these things now i can associate these flavors with these hops and that it really does kind of make sense when that you is, think about yeah. it in that kind of way yep Look at you guys on brand. At least I'm wearing a hot butcher shirt. You guys oh, you have, have the glass. Shirt, so yes, yeah, so I have the I have the shirt on. Yeah, I have the glasses. I just always forget to break them. I actually went through all of my glassware today and like reorganized. Like I have like a crazy. I mean, you guys saw the glass cap yeah. that I have. I have crazy, and I did it all like threw away some stuff. I can reorganize everything. So you figured I would have grabbed one, but uh, but, but yeah, you have the shirt though. It doesn't. It's well. Yeah, there you go. A shirt with all the hair in the world on it. When you have two dogs and. 
and you're lazy, you yeah. just have hair and everything. If Mike's yeah, up I mean, close, the haze... it's covered in white stuff. I get it. <laughs> is it? Okay, yeah. So you see, Mike's got the a red idea here. He has that kind of yellow kind of glow kind of uh, from a bulb. He's using his iPad, so the, the clarity's great, but not pristine. So you can't see all the... Uh, all the, all the dog hair and cat hair all of them because he was doing a little bit of a... What's his name again? The guy from fucking um, 007? You're doing your best impression of stroking uh, the cat as an evil cow. guy. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, blow <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was before we went on air. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. What do you think of this? What, what does it look like to you guys? It has this kind of murky kind of like... Like I call it alien skin. It's it almost looks like it has a touch of gray to it for me. I don't know why uh, I think that. Yeah, it I doesn't. Say... That's just it's not as vibrant e kind of. It's like the saturation was knocked back a skosh as opposed to being knocked. That's forward. a good way to put it. Yeah, I always say that it's not quite opaque, even though it is. It just it has almost like you can almost see into it. It's weird, you know. It's yeah, I mean, you can kind of get. You can kind of get through it. So if you, I don't know if you can see it on my camera. When I pass my hand on it, you get a, you definitely get light change. Yeah. So light yeah. gets through it, but it has like like that contrast, like I said. And it's like if you're just you know you bump up the contrast in a lot of these hazies, they have this vibrance, almost like a you know like a lava lamp kind of vibrance to them. But this one has it just yeah, going the other direction. You know, highlight. It, you know, on Instagram when you push the shadow up a little bit too far, <laughs> it kind of washes everything out. That's yeah. basically what I'm talking about. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't look too shabby. Eight percent, five percent more than the the typical hop. They're they're very they love seven point five. Yeah, so yeah. that was when I saw this, I was very very intrigued because it seems like the seven and a half percent dipa is like their like sort of base recipe, then they kind of just mess with mm -hmm. it, but it always stays right around seven and a half percent. So, what's with the eight percent? Is it because it's a collab? But they've also done seven and a half percent collabs with a lot of the other stuff too. So it's like what. What are we getting? Is this going to be like an extra punch? But yeah. it's like half a percent. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that too. It, it could be a collab thing. Um, I, I doubt it. Uh, as far as collabs go, and this is probably one of the, my favorite things when it comes to Hot Butcher, I like the way they do their collabs, uh, which is basically uh, more often than not, what they do is uh, uh, most breweries, not Hot Butcher, I mean, most breweries, they do a collab and then they wait months and then they go to the other brewery and then you do a collab. For, Almost all the hot butcher collabs I've seen, both breweries do the beer at the same exact time at their own brewery and release at the same exact time. Like I know Slice did that they, when yeah, they did the Slice, the Slice, they did that. Yeah. There's a like it seems like a lot of times that that happens. Maybe it's more of a COVID thing because they're not mm. they don't want to go back and forth or something like that. But yeah, yeah. I didn't realize whiff. that like the other ones did that. But yeah, let's get a whiff. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> now I want to. I want to look at the label so bad, but I, I, you know what I mean. I, I'm. I'm good. I'm. I'm happy that I have this weird kind of like short term memory because I don't even remember what I read on the label. Mm. But I would say I'll go first because I, I, for me it's it's very much it's it's a it's a tropical fruit medley with a decent amount of orange to it. It's it, a lot of these bigger hazies have been leaning a ton of grapefruit with me. Uh, as of late, but this is strictly kind of an orange thing for me with a sweetened kind of tropical fruit. Like I have, I don't want to go kiwi, but there's like a tropical fruit sweetness to it. And then this little prickly kind of green thing that I don't know if it's going to go dank or if it's going to go like green, green grass in this kind of thing. I'm not quite sure if it's going to go in either direction there. What are you guys getting? Uh, for me, I'm getting, I'm getting uh, actually a bit of dankness. And I'm, but I, it, it is like, you know, on the saccharine kind of sweet side, um, like almost like to me, like almost like tangerine. No, it's orangey, but sweet, sweet orange, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say tangerine-y. It's got like the, the tropical fruit that, that you were getting at. I was thinking more of like a, like a mixed berry medley, but I guess, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's still kind of sweet tropical. And then it has this like, um, which I assume is probably the some lactose that they're putting in it. It has this almost like vanilla or confectionery sugar sweetness. If you kind of really I, dig deep. Yeah, I, I could see that because it's like I think that sweetness is the reason why I went with like a like the kiwi thing. Yeah, um, I can see that. Me, kiwi is more of a like a sweeter tropical fruit. Um, a berry thing is that's like a very kind of hot butchery thing. I get like even when they don't put berry on their labels, mm -hmm. I typically get there. 
Um, but it, it, like you're saying that the sweetness, it's like powdered sugar as opposed to granulated sugar. Yeah. So it's not completely like lactose, but it's not that granulated, like super sweet yeah. sugar. It's that kind of powdered soft, soft sugar kind of thing going on on the back tro tropical fruit, you know, bright citrus, pleasant dank. We pretty much covered the label. So we're just checking there. We're just reading whatever <laughs> they have on there. We have no original thoughts in our own brains, basically yeah. what we're saying. So. Well, one thing is that the front of the can says, it says, says Nelson Sauvin, and I'm not really getting a big, any oh, yeah. amount of Nelson that's obvious. I was hoping to get sort of that 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 grape, that white wine type of character I get from Sauvin. I could, it, it, for all intents and purposes, it could be there, but that tends to be working a much better way when it's a single hop uh, or a, a, a not as many hop kind of beer like it's like you know pretty much every every beer is going to contain citra even if they don't write it in a label it's going to have citra in it and then you add that nelson savine on it it's it, it can it can get out because i don't think it's an overly aggressive thing white grape when you start packing that kind of big citrus that sweet tropical fruit on top i don't need i, I perceptually i don't think it's easy to get it so yeah. it, it might be getting lost in the volume there yep i agree yeah I, i'm wondering if it's going to come through more on the taste Let's find out. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I forgot. We got to do a little clinking thing. <laughs> clink, 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 clink. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. That is infinitely less sweet than I thought it was going to be. Same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's actually like, I'm fucking ecstatic about the lack of sweetness on it. Same. Yeah. I mean, th this is, this is a lot more, actually a little bit drier than I expected. And, you know, yeah. you, got, you got a lot more green kind of a character than sort of I was expecting. I was expecting a big, sweet citrus punch, you know, and I'm not mm -hmm. quite getting that. And I feel like the white wine does come through. Like after you finish the sip, it kind of puckers your side palate a little bit and kind of leaves mm -hmm. that like white winey grapiness type thing going on. Yeah, it's um, it's one of those things where you actually go into the nose and when you talk about pretty much what we all talked about, which is, you know, I was leaning heavily into like a sweeter kind of kiwi thing with a kind of, and when I said kind of like orangey-ness, you kind of went more tangerine kind of sweetness, kind of like not tang, but kind of a little elevated sweetness, like confection, not confectionery, um, from concentrate, like tangerine juice kind of thing. Yep. And then having that, even that, even the, the green portion of the show, I thought it was going to be a little bit grassy. It's a completely different beer for me in the taste and that it still shows us things, but now it is a little bit more grapefruit for me. If yep. it's tropical fruit, it's more of an under, under ripened kind of tropical fruit, like a mango or something like that. And in the way that green comes off, it's definitely a dank. It's not like piney resin dank. It's more like no. beast or middle weed kind of okay weed kind of dankiness and like mike said the the with the way the bitterness comes off in the combination with the dryness it's pretty aggressively bittering uh because yeah. of how dry it is i think it just elevates it you know yep i'm, I'm not mad at it either i can't I'm, I'm kind of enjoying that sort of that sort of finish you know we don't get these a lot in a new piece you know no no not at all in for eight percent it doesn't really drink eight percent it drinks like i keep wanting to go back and kind of pound this kind of down very quickly yeah it's danger beer this is yeah. you make bad decisions on this but you get a four pack of this and you're not paying attention and bad shit happens <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. or good stuff depending on how much you remember yeah. i mean it really is some, you know but no this is a, and, and i mean it, it's not that it's not that hot butcher does sweet on sweet on sweet they're not like one of those breweries they tend to lean a little bit sweet um, but they're, they they don't deliver this level of bittering and dryness on, on the high ABV level of their hazies all that often. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool little, it's a fun little uh, mixture, a fun yeah. little uh, take on their beers. And I like and it. Think, I like it quite a bit. And do we think that's Aslan's kind of influence there? I, I, I've had a handful of their beers, but when I've had them, they were fresh at, 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 at um, Beer Fest or the cans I got were relatively old. Um, not relatively old, but like a month-ish. And I like like them for the most part, but yeah, they never had that 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 too sweetness. They were, from what I remember, they they were more on the bitter side. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's part partly them. I I could definitely see that. Um, you know, it's it's kind of like a, a, a it, you damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation when you do collabs like this. And I'm guessing at how they did it, but I'm assuming you know a lot of people go either go, hey, it's our system, 
let's write a recipe, but mm -hmm. let me kind of brew it because I'm more familiar with our system. Or you could go the other direction, which might be the case here, where it's like, tell us how you would brew it. And then we'll do that kind of on our system to see how the beer comes out. Because uh, again, even if you took this beer in a brewer on both systems, it's not going to be the same because they're two, unless they're exactly the same systems. Yeah. They're going to be different beers to begin with. So uh, it, it, it does taste like, there's a decent amount of influence in the collab because it usually is whoever's can art is on there, which means they brewed it at that place. It tends to be, they drive the bus when it comes to brewing the beer. Uh, and almost all collabs, I'm not saying they did this, but almost all collabs are people going, want to do a collab? Sure. Okay. And then they hang up the phone and a person says, calls our head brewer goes, yeah, we want to make a collab. This is the recipe we came up with brew it. And then that's that's pretty much the collab. That's how that works. <laughs> Typically, like I've I've actually never seen head brewers that go to the brewery for a collab actually brew a beer ever in my life. And I've seen like <laughs> multiple times. They just hang out and they just take pictures of each other and they just go and just uh, eat lunch while somebody else actually brews the beer. <laughs> it, it's it, it's literally how it's done. But it does taste like there's influence from the other place yeah. on here, which is kind of cool. I like that the green dankness is almost vegetal. You know what I mean? I'm sort of getting that sort of like almost like green vegetation instead of it being necessarily like super weedy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it is. That's why I said like middle weed, like not like super dank, yeah. like nuggy weed, like kind of, and vegetal be a good word to uh, put in there. It's the kind of, you know, it's, I, I go with sometimes like unkempt lawn, like if you mow a lawn that's like, been un, uh, not ten, taken care of to where there's crabgrass and weeds and all kinds of shit like that. And so it has this melange of kind of greenness in it. Mm. And it comes off really nice, man. This is actually a really fun beer. Like I didn't know what to think of it and based off the label Same. and a little bump in ABV, I'm like, okay, it's going to be a little bit more loud, a little bit more sweet. We'll see how it goes. And it's kind of surprised me in a very pleasant way. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yeah. So um, you guys don't grade stuff to you? No, but if you want it, we can. No, I don't do this. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say, did you start yeah. again? Or? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm gonna let's give it a eight out of eight out of nine. Um, eggplants, <laughs> eggplants, eight out of nine. Okay, kettle, yeah, and, and with with an added four uh, teapot kettles for originality. I don't fucking know. None of that shit makes any sense. <laughs> so, uh, as far as this beer goes, though, like, where would you put this? Like, as far as like, um, I don't want to say rank it up against. You know what I mean? Hot butchers, other beers, but like, is this like some of the better heasiness that you've had from them? Is it middle of the road? Is it like, is it kid shit, shit a fuck mountain? Like, where does it land for you guys? I would say it's the most interesting as of recent when it comes to their hazies. Um, that's it's different, right? So, but it's also a collab, so I guess you can't really fully compare it to the, like their just solo IPAs. But it is one of the more distant from the other ones we've had because we've had a few that and, and while they're good sometimes like especially if 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 you're doing one after another they kind of sometimes mesh together you know what i mean mm -hmm. this i think would stand apart if if we did this back to back with like say another hop butcher proper hazy well what about you mike i would say i would put it probably in this is very vague i suppose i would put it like top third it's in the the top realm, yeah. you know. But I I like a lot of their hazies. I think they do, do a really good job with their stuff. So, I mean, um, to say that this is different. So I mean, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. But I I like how they do hazies in general. So top third, I feel it's fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 up there. I mean, like I said, there's there's some wow factor on some of the stuff that they do. Um, I'm not saying, you know, this lacks some kind of, it, it, this is, I, I, this is going to sound super douchey. This is like textbooky delicious, like, but it lacks a little bit of hoopspa, like a, it had a little bit of flair, a little bit of something to kind of separate it from the rest. If that makes any, a personality, like it's a great beer. It's, it's showing me the cool dry stuff, that dryness on there, that green, the way the fruit's coming off, it's all great, but there, it's just, you know, a little pizzazz it lacks. You know what I mean? So while it's probably still, I would still agree with you being like an upper third, it makes actually complete sense to me. So you're like, that sounds weird, but it doesn't in my brain. Um, yep. It just, it's out of that. So if I'm going to say King Shit of Fuck Mountain, it's up close to the top, but it's not on that wall. It's close to the up there. It's just not eking into it. 
Well, for me, Matt, like if I'm going to like a brewery, um, if they have this on draft, this is what I'm getting almost every time I go. You know what I mean? It's, yes. It, it, yes. Actually, this has dawned on me. And I would like to ask you guys this because you would probably be more in tune with this. But from my experience, a lot of Trillium vibes on this. Um, interesting. And I've never said like... that. Like I'm saying like Trillium from like 2016 or 2018, <laughs> say, 19. Let me correct you there and say yeah. not Trillium older, right now. Yeah, a little older yeah. school Trillium. I agree with you actually. And I, I didn't think about that because I just think about the more modern stuff. But yeah, older school, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. It has that vegetal um, Trillium hop kind of bite that used to be pleasant back in the day where now as their hop bites a little bit harsher. Um, so this is definitely, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. Yeah. You guys know call. better than me. It's just cause I have a limited kind of, you know, compared to you guys, I have limited fucking experience with, when it comes to Trillium, but it's fun. I like it. I like it more now that I thought about that. <laughs> um, cause it reminds me, I, I keep wanting to think, I, I don't know what beer I'm thinking of. There's a distinct beer from Trillium. It's not like a super hard to get one. I don't know if it's like, Hmm. I don't know what it is, which beer I would think, but regardless, let's not talk about that because it's another brewery. Um, before we kind of finish this off, I'm curious to ask you guys, like out of the box that they sent you, is there one specific beer in that box? Because I think we probably got all the exact same beers. Is there one in there that you that has you most curious? The barley yes. wine. Oh, barley fuck wine. yeah, right? Yeah. It's got to be the fucking barley wine. Yeah. And you only, only got one of those, right? Yeah, he actually texted. Yeah, so you guys got to fight over it, right? Sorry. So, so I think we're gonna we're gonna try to. I, I figured the barley one will last a little bit. Like, I I think we'll probably try to do something extremely distanced, um, sort of like we did with with the Bourbon County reviews. Well, the first one, but uh, we got to make something work because there's no way it's it's not fair for one yeah. of us to drink it. Like the lager, I don't think that 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 that's a big deal, but like, I, I made a joke like, we'll flip a coin and one of us will get the lager and one of us will get the barley wine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike, you got the lager. Yeah, I'll flip the coin. I'll do that, trust me. And I won't lie. Wait, you two guys are fucking, like, tech nerds. One of you doesn't have a drone that you can just, like, pour yours and then drone it over to Mike and then... <laughs> we thought about it. We could. Well, yeah, um, we, don't, we don't have a drone, but like we thought about pouring no, it what, and then capping it. Yeah, like if if you ever like bottle, pour it, cap it, and then drive back home and do it right away. Like I, yeah. I live like twenty minutes away. It's not that not that big a deal. Like we can do something like that probably. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for the barley wine because that's like serious shit for me. Like they're like like it's like you know lagers were cool and that was serious shit for me, and that and their kind of foray into the lager game has me more excited for the barley wine because they've, they've done such a great job with the lager mm. with all the loggers that they've done then i'm like okay well you know they've always been kind of sneakily great with the stouts not a lot of people knew it and then uh, like even when they started sending off boxes you know it was a lot of hazies a lot of this and even it took a while for them to send stouts out to people and then when and they hit with you know their fat bear and then the and then the peanut butter version of that and then people like holy shit like this is kind of crazy and that's that's the shit wait until they come out with the columbian exposition man you guys are gonna fucking go bonkers somebody mentioned that to me in in a comment they're like that one was crazy yeah and they've done it twice so it's gonna come back it's that wasn't a one-off it's all coffee um, though, right it's a coffee stout yeah yeah, yeah. it's fucking bonkers it's probably one it's probably it might be number one still on my list of hot butcher beers Oh, wow. Like ever, yeah, that fucking good. I have a, a king shit fuck mountain. The the Mount Rushmore is very distinct for hot butchers. That it's a uh, traveling scientist number one. Um, it's their uh, it's their blazed orange OG. Am I, or was it double blaze? I forget. Blazed orange really list. good. Yeah, yeah, we got two of those in this box, so that'll be fun. Yeah. But um, but it's going into a barley wine. It's going to be really interesting to see how that kind of comes off for a couple of reasons. One, it's fucking barley wine. It's really hard to do. In Chicago is sneaky, like barley wine, like snobbery central. You know, you're talking about, you know, Goose Island. You're talking about Revolution. You're talking about mm -hmm. um, there's um, Brick half House Brewing too. does what? Half Acre too, yeah. Yeah, Half Acre. Um, there's a place called Brick House uh, or Brickstone Brewing. Um, there's a ton of barley wine people there, and they take that shit for for real. So not just us wanting to be good. I think you know for them to put a barley wine out and to put it in a fucking can, which I dig. But 
you know, even though, you know, fucking Revolution does it in a 16 ounce can, it's just going to be fun because it's kind of like, okay, here's our shit. You don't even judge us by our barley wine. So we'll see what's what. Yeah. And it's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah. So there you go. Um, anyway, when I do this, I typically talk about, uh, I finish off going, you know, it, 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 is it one of the better double IPAs I've had as of late? I think we all say yes. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it might not be the best, but it's up there. Um, yep. The value to availability is a weird thing for Hot Butcher because I, uh, Jeremiah has told me specifically the price points that they have for their beer, uh, you know, and what they sell every beer at. Um, but I, what you sell your beer at to a retail outlet doesn't necessarily reflect what that person's going to sell it at. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten wild reports from people being like, Oh no, this one was 16 bucks. And the guy's like, no way I pay 20 bucks. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So something like this, I kind of equate it to personal preference. What do I want this beer to be at? What number would you pick this up pay for it, drink it and go, yeah. Okay. That's about right. Given uh, what 16 to 18. Yeah, I was going to say mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. 18 bucks, um, just because given what what I know Trillium costs are, what other double IPAs that aren't Trillium, yeah, 16 to 18, 18 bucks would be normal. If, if I saw it for 20, though, and if I saw it for 20 and, and I already knew who Hot Butcher was, right, like and all that, then then I don't think I would be surprised, especially now, because when, when we do get drops here, it's very, very, very rare. <sighs> So, and that's it, it. Well, that's the difference. Like, it this this it lands in Jersey, it's probably a $25 for a pack. I'm not gonna buy it because I get it for free, but I mean, I'm talking about like what it should go, MSRP, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. kind of like if they were to sell it out of their back, yeah, cap, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. unfair once you get drops out there, you, you, the further away you get you geographically from you the brewery. To. Yeah, it's it, it will not even have to. It's just that it's out of your hands what it costs. Yeah. It's not like they they have to be forced to sell at a certain price point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, let's put it this way: over the past eight days, I picked, I saw five places that had Focal Banger, and it ranged in my area alone, like a thirty mile radius, anywhere from sixteen ninety nine to twenty six ninety nine for packs. Dude. So there's a ten dollar get... swing, and they're all getting it from the same fucking place at the same fucking price point. So they're choosing yeah, the price they sell it at. You know what I mean? So, so you can't you can't beat them up for 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 pricing that far away from where they're located. You can tell who the nicer people are, though. Whoever that's selling oh, that yeah. seventeen dollar yeah. one who says a saint. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cause... actually, the, 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 well, the, 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 well, it, they're like a major chain, so they're oh. they're looking at volume over whatever. But that's the best thing about major chains is that. They don't have a ton of it, but they still think volume. So it's not like they're like, we have something rare, mark it up. Where's the other guy? I think the other guy just didn't even know what he had. And he's like, oh, I think people like this. I got to charge yeah. crazy for it. Um, that's the other part about this. I, I would, go the value and availability. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. I say I would rather just do that in call 50. Poor <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and uh, yeah, well, I mean, in reality, this beer should only be like six dollars a four pack. You know, I mean, what do you want? I, mean, I want everything to be no, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, no, but it's like, dude, I'll, every now and then I'll pick up a, a beer that's in this in the orbit of what this beer is, and it'll be like eleven ninety nine or something like that. And it's like, did they really? You know what I mean? It's what's what's the cost on this anyway? Um. Availability is weird in this one. So you're talking about drops up by you. You say they're few and far between or almost nil, like one or almost, two. Done. No, we got them like, I think over the summer and it was like two. I think, um, I think twice, twice. Yeah. I know one was when Snorkel Squad, Snorkel Squad came out, which was around July. Cause I remember Mike and I were, finally got together for that one. And then uh, there was one other, and I know Kyle got some up in upstate New York. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not regular. It's just like, and, and when I asked Jeremiah about it, he said it was like, just some distributor was like, Hey, let's just, toss a couple cases over and we'll just disperse them however we see fit so yeah it's weird though because it's like it's getting more prevalent it seems like um because there was a couple drops that i know that they did in new york uh which was for uh they were having like they were supposed to do like some kind of uh show convention what's it called beer festival yep. um and they shipped it up there but then there's this one guy I actually trade. It's probably my most consistent trade partner. And by trade partner, it's just like the only person I actually like. We constantly meet up and, and shuffle beer back and forth. This guy named Mike. 
And we do a we do a social distancing handoff probably about every two to three weeks. And um, I turned him on the hot butcher. I was like, okay, here's some hot butcher, you know? And he's like, oh, I love this, love this. And then he was like, oh, I found some in New York. And he's like, oh, I found some around here. And the other day, he's like, I just had this one. It was great. And it, he's not trading for it. You know what I mean? Like, he's actually, like, buying it off the shelf. So I'll have to ask Jeremiah to see what's what. I think they're doing a little bit more distribution, maybe. Uh, we'll see what's what. So it, that's the thing. It can be had. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, is that it's, yeah. it's a distro beer. They don't sell out of it tap room it's not like they're selling beers direct for, from the brewery so even chicago you have to go to like binnies or whatever yeah. the fuck whatever place to actually pick it up um and i always do the whole if you like what we like this if you like really good hazy if you like not old school trillium but like new school old school trillium like i said like that 2016 to 2018 19 vibes of trillium you know um mm -hmm. i think it's it, it's in that thing in it, it who's going to argue with that you know what i mean like it's kind of they were they were the man during that time and and this is pretty close to that so like if do you guys have any specific like if, if things in mind as far as like not relating it to a specific beer but like i like this i like that and if you like this and like that you like this if you don't much to ask? no if if you don't want if if you like a hazy ipa if you like a new england ipa and you don't want full on you know juice right you don't want like Full on juice bomb Julia style type thing, and you want a little bit of bitterness in your beer, a little bit of um, extra kind of bite, I guess. This is yeah. it. You're kind of going to get the the whole package. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to argue with either position. I mean, I agree. This does remind me in a big way of sort of like three, four year old Trillium. Um, if, if you're in this, which area, not to cut you off, Mike, you incidentally have in your fridge. Mike always rips out like a three or four year old trillium every live stream like i'm like oh when'd you get that he's like i don't know it's been there for like two three years so mike actually knows what he's talking about anyway yeah. well here's what it is so my beer gets pushed to the back of the fridge all the time so I remember once in a while I'm like what the hell when, when, something i don't remember buying you know so I'm like oh, well might as well drink this one so yeah no it, it does remind me a lot of, of sort of like say three four year old trillium in uh in the best way because um I mean, I don't know. People have probably heard me complain hard about Trillium in the last, you know, twelve to eighteen months. But if you're if you're in this area, sort of, um, and New England guys, if you're in this area and you do see this, if you're looking for sort of old school kind of, well, old school, new school, as Matt brought up, Trillium vibes, this is your beer. So. I just came up with the most amazing idea in the history of mankind, and I kind of don't want to say it live on the air and because don't. we're gonna. Oh, yeah. No, I'm gonna say it anyway because I'm lazy and I won't follow through. Um, dude, we can make a million dollars right now. Do you ever see a smoker like uh, people turn like? Do you ever see a homemade smoker like a meat smoker to where someone takes like a, 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 a like a, a barrel, like a fucking a barrel, turns it on the side and mm -hmm. cuts it, and then it has a lid. Yep. A round fridge. A round beer fridge with so you could lazy susan it. So like you, you sell it to beer people and it's a round beer cooler and every shelf rotates. So that way when you're stacking all your shit, you're not uh -huh. digging into the back trying yes. to find stuff. Yes. Is that a million? Are we making make it? Are, did we this says did we just become best friends? Did we just make we a million did. dollars? We just became best friends and business partners. <laughs> Holy she shit, tell me man. that wouldn't work, dude. Hey, it would fit in the fucking corner. You ever try to put a fridge and you're like, I wish I would kind of, kind of put it in the corner. Yes. So it, it'd be like yeah. it'd be like a door that would open, like the smoker, like it'd be a curved door. Yeah. And uh, that's brilliant, Matt. Oh I God. hate you. That's awesome. And we can, no, because and we're gonna air this, and some dude is gonna make it, and then I'm gonna get like he's gonna be like, here's a dollar. <laughs> we can, and then we can make version two of it that actually you can convert existing fridges. You take out the shelves, put it in an existing, make it so you put it into an existing. Dude, and, dude, you can make it look like a hazy can, a, a can. Like, think mm. about all the possibilities. And some kid is like, my beer fridge looks like a 16 ounce can, but gigantic. Oh my God. So, this is what you get. This is what you get when the great minds hang out on drink 8% haze at two in the afternoon. You get a refrigerator. <laughs> Fucking shark tank. <laughs> the coolest. So 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. Maybe Mark Cuban's uh, going to hit hit one of us up. So who knows? Yeah, there you go, Cubes. <laughs> I've had it. I just want ten percent. Everybody do all the work. Just give me ten percent. Yeah. That's all I want. <laughs> um. So anyway, um, where can they find you guys if they're looking for you know, the old internet? How they find you in both YouTube's <clears throat> and Instagram? All that fun stuff. Just hit nerdsense.net and there links to everywhere we are where we're posted. It's easy. Yeah, and it kind of upsets me because this is the point in the show where where I want to be like, hey, if you're subscribed to me, you should go check those guys out, but you should already be subscribed. You should be because what do you guys got? 700 subs? No, we're at not five. Even, six, eight, six. We're not at six yet. That's criminal. Five ninety six. Absolutely criminal. Sean checked. and Mike are two of the nicest dudes in the history of beardom, and not beardom, but of mankind. Um, and like, literally, if you like beer and you like nerdy shit, and I'm gonna let you in on a little secret: beer nerds tend to be nerdy fucks in general, not just beer nerds. Um, you should check them, dude. Why are you not checking these dudes out? I mean, I understand it's regional sometimes. You know, they do a lot of, yeah. you know, your uh, New England based stuff. But who the fuck doesn't want to see New England beer? That's fucking. Everybody trades for that shit like hotcakes. So go and keep going like this, like you guys are over there. Oh, by the way, we'll there. trade, we'll trade beer too. Just went out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're not me. They just don't get free shit and go fuck yourself. They'll actually be like, "Hey, we'll send you beer back." <laughs> um. So yeah, no, check them out. Seriously, they're not. They don't curse like me. They're not assholes. They don't call people out in the internet and start fires. They're like le legitimately nice people. And I have no idea why they agreed to do this, but yeah, anyway, yeah, go check them out. <laughs> so anyway, so there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, joint review as much as we did. Cause I had a blast. This was awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Um, so like minutes. I said, yeah, <laughs> well, we talked, we talked for a good 10 or so 20 minutes. Anyway, I don't care. I don't care. It's a Keith review anyway. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're drinking something as delicious as this. Oh, hopefully you go check those guys out and hopefully you next time. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>